Nice backdrop. I have changed. I mean, I'm in a complete different room because no one could see me last last time. I was so dark. I I look like a witch. <laughs> but anyway, good backdrop. So yes, yeah. I'm here and ready to talk about my favourite subject. Well, one of my favourite subjects. Is it really? Because it is so confusing. It is, and I'm going to try and simplify things without going on and on. We don't want to get too scientific. Um, so actually, if I could just start by introducing yeah. that really quickly, because if I can explain that now, because we are going to be coming back to oestrogen quite a lot, that pesky old thing. So if I can just explain really quickly something about oestrogen. So yeah. oestrogen, it's a bit like Cinderella, okay? okay? Doesn't want to be too hot, too cold. Um, yeah, very sensitive. We don't want too much. We don't want too little. Okay. And um, during PMT, there might be imbalances, perimenopausal, there are imbalances in female sex hormones and sort of menopause when things are all declining. Um, a big topic we're going to be talking about today, and I know, Davinia, you're sort of quite a big fan of this, is estrogen detox. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. really quickly, just an overview on that before we go into the questions. I know my DNA testing is back to front, but at least I can show you the pathways. Okay. Estrogen. Well, what, we, what, I can, I, what I can do is we're, Pippa and I are going to be holding up a few of these, and yeah. I'll be able to show you a little a few graphs. But what I will do, I've got an editor who is able to, who'll be able to put it over the top of this. So because it's such a confusing um, subject, you can go over it again on IGTV or on Pippa's website or on my uh, YouTube. So don't worry if you can't take it all in now, just let it sort of guide in a little, guide, uh, drift in a little bit, and then you can yeah. go over it in detail later. So fret not about all the pictures we will have them put it put up properly like yeah. a lecture yes there we go Ooh. um yeah so we need estrogen and we want it coming in but once we've used our estrogen we we need to dispose of it just like we do with pesticides hormones you know caffeine all sorts of things we've got to get rid of it and that's done through the liver okay so we have something called phase one so the estrogen this is the first thing it's going to do it's going to go through phase one then it next needs to go to another pathway called phase two, and phase three is excreting it via um, bile and urine, mainly bile, so that's involving the gut. Okay, so analogy, a bath. Imagine we get phase one working. Excellent, great. We're going to turn on that tap, the water is flowing. But that's easy, yeah? Yeah, and that, that is where dim is useful. So if somebody is not metabolizing, like I don't, in this phase one, Okay, DIM will help turn that tap on. Lovely okay. supplement, okay? I need it, Davinia, you need it. We're slightly different doses. Um, but, you know, that's if you have a problem with phase one. So we need to turn that tap on with DIM. Then the next thing is phase two, okay? So if that's blocked, that means the plug is in. So say we've got DIM and we've got everything flowing. Oh my goodness, what happens if we can't then get it out of the plug? So that's why you can't just concentrate on phase one you need to think about what's happening next, okay? So we take the plug out, great, this is phase two, this is where the water's now flushing out, but what if that drain is blocked? Well, where's phase two? Where, where's phase okay. two? So dim, so phase two, so there's dim here, so I'm red, I, I'll talk about this pathway in a minute, so I don't uh, metabolize estrogen very well, so that's phase one. Then we go through this next Where pathway. in the body is that? Is that, is that everywhere? Yeah. Yeah, so okay. this is happening at sort of cellular level, but it's in, it mainly in the liver. So, because the liver is the mainly main in the liver. organ. It's, it's or, nice to be yeah, yeah, it's in the liver. It's the main organ, the liver, for detoxification. So it has to detoxify all our hormones, estrogen, thyroid, and, or, you know, these kind of pesticides and petrol fumes. So our liver is, um, has got a lot to do, yeah? We need to look okay. after our liver. It's a, you know, busy, busy organ. Um, so it's coming in here, so that's what I need. And then the next stage, there's quite a few different pathways it can go through, and that's where we can see in the DNA testing which pathway do you need support, okay? And I need support there in that next pathway as well, which, you know, you can see. So, okay, say so I'm supporting this pathway. I'm taking the plug out of that bath. Fantastic, it's all flushing out. My symptoms are improving. But what happens if that drain is blocked and that's the gut? What happens if you're constipated? What happens if you've got bad bacteria? So you kind of like, 
you know, maybe you work backwards and make sure that gut is good and then work backwards. You can, or you can deal with all of, all of it together. But what you don't want to do is just deal with phase one, get that water rushing in through the tap and then it's got nowhere to go. Okay. Okay. If just to clarify, to the just to clarify, if, if, say if all three pathways needed supplements. So you've got dim at the top, which is what? Yeah. What is dim? Okay. So dim is um, from cruciferous vegetables. Now, right, you so that's say, what right, vegetables are they? Just, just let's go back right back to layman's yeah. terms. So, so what like are... broccoli, broccoli sprouts. Uh, broccoli sprouts are, are really good. Um, then you've got Brussels sprouts, and you've got things like cabbage and pak choy. So lots of those, and green leafy vegetables are good as well. So you've got um, rocket and watercress. So there's a lot of green things there. And I would say you need to eat about two and a half cups of these a day anyway to support detoxification, anyway, to support any kind of detox. But to work on a therapeutic level, if you do need more than that, then that's where you need DIM. Right. Okay. So you take your DIM, however yep. you prescribe, maybe twice a day, once a day, depending on your particular yep. detox need. Yep. And then what would you take in the next phase? Okay. The first phase is quite easy. The next phase is actually quite complicated because it really depends on what you need and which pathway um, because it might be that you need to support your methylation which you do Davinia so that might be um, magnesium it might be b12 it might be betaine it might be phosphatidylcholine there are a lot of things that are involved in that methylation process okay um, it might be then there's another pathway called glucuronidation pathway which is another important pathway and that's CAD glucurate. So it does get a bit more complicated the next pathway. Um, you and I are missing that glutathione gene. So it's good to support that with um, a precursor to glutathione, which is our master antioxidant. Um, yeah. But you might not do all of this at once. You know, you might support one pathway for a few months, then another pathway. People respond in different ways. But yes, testing does help. It does help. Now, DIM, you know, you could sort of say, right, well, I'll try it. I mean, ideally you would test, but you could say, oh, I'll try it and see whether my, you know, um, symptoms improve. I've always, I, I've always um, tried and failed. So basically I uh, opted for the testing so, because I was sick, sick of stabbing in the dark. But a lot of people don't, don't get the fact that the test can actually be cost effective. So... If you want to go around the houses, would you start with a low dose of DIM to see if that helps with PMT? Yeah, and I would sort of, I mean, again, the, the dosaging is, as we'll see from your test, you know, we did go in with a higher dose, and then we found actually that it was too much, didn't we? And we could see that from your Dutch test, which is really, really interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I would start on a low dose um, and then try it, you know, maybe all month. But then for some people, like, I mean, I've been playing around with mine. It does vary. I'm now taking mine from day 14 to day one of, you know, just before I'm period, when my period starts. But yeah, so you could um, try the DIM. Um, but as I said, if you, can, if you don't need it, then your symptoms are going to be worse. If you do need it, but you then find things like your spotting or you get your period uh, two weeks early, which obviously you don't want, then you need to drop down the dosage or maybe try from day 14 only to day one of your period. So it does vary from person to person. It is an amazing supplement, not necessarily for everyone, but it, it is great. Yeah. Okay. So that's a cheaper way to do it. So try it for two months. Where would you get DIM from? Because obviously you can buy it online, but you want to get a decent source of, of, vitamin, of supplement because you want it to have the right yeah. ingredients. Where would you get yours from? And I'm just going to switch this on and off again. You carry on talking. Because I'm working direct with clients, I, the company I work with are you know, for my clients. So it's a practitioner um, you know, driven supplement company. So they're all very potent, the, dose, the, um, the supplements. So they're all American, but you can't buy those retail. Um, but you will be able to buy something retail, I'm sure. Now, CAD glucurate, I don't know. I don't know if you can get that um, retail. You'll find that there are certain things that you'll only be able to, um, to get if you've been um, recommended it by a practitioner. So anyway, so those are... Would you, what sort of practitioner would you recommend for this? For, uh, you know, obviously not everyone can get to you or, yeah. or you know... But, some people want to work face to face so who's the best sort of person to deal with this 
going through the DNA test, yeah. which I really agree with, and the Dutch panel test. What yeah. sort of doctor are they looking for? What sort of practitioner are they looking for? Yeah, Is it so you've got to look for someone. So I'm trained with LipoGX. I'm um, their registered practitioner. So, you know, for DNA tests... That's for DNA. Have, yeah. yeah, that's DNA. And the Dutch test, there are various people that do it. So pra practitioners like myself um, that analyze them. Um, you've got some doctors as well that do deal with analyzing um, Dutch tests as well. Um, so I think, you know, you can just sort of Google that. So that's, those are the kind of areas like tests that I'm doing quite a lot with clients. But as I said, if you don't want, if you can't afford it, you don't want to do a one-to-one, -one, then yes, there are trial and errors that you can make and you can buy those supplements yourself. So, I mean, I know it's not always affordable to, to go through me. I, I get that. Okay. And you'd also, I mean, I suppose buying an app like Flow would help you take notes because it's all yes. about being able to track it, isn't it? Flow's yes, really well, you, That's I mean, what you I know use that. for contraception because I, I don't take the pill. Okay. I know I'm risking it because I've already got four kids. Oh. But <laughs> anyway. Yeah, well, you know, because you used the Flow app, didn't you, for your Dutch test? So you do need to be quite precise. If you've got having regular cycles, you need to do the Dutch test on days 19 to 22. Um, if you've got a normal sort of like 28 day cycle. So you then, you know, you've got to know where you are. There is another test if you are getting irregular periods or if you're not getting periods at all and you're menopausal, you can do that Dutch complete as well. There's a Dutch cycling if you're irregular. So if you've got irregular periods. Um, but yeah, so that's basically estrogen detox. And it is, it's not the only problem, but it is responsible for a lot of problems. Okay, so even if you are taking HRT, Estrogen levels have really dropped and your progesterone, many hormones at all, um, and you're taking HRT, you still need to think about, do you need to detoxify that HRT? Yeah, because you've got different things on this DNA testing that puts you like sensitive to exogenous estrogens. This can put you at slightly higher risk of breast cancer, have a nice little yellow dot there. So the reds are not very good. I've got quite a few red dots. Um, the yellow is not so good and the green is pretty good. So... I mean, I wouldn't say this is a brilliant picture, but I only have a slight snip on the, uh, the sensitivity to estrogen. As I remember you, Davinia, I think yours was pretty good there. Um, but yeah, so I mean, these, these tests are really useful. And the interesting thing is that this test does mirror a lot of what, uh, those are my questions, not that, a lot of what I did in the Dutch test. So it does sort of, it did kind of mirror what was going on, which is interesting. So that's your DNA. Dutch test is where you are now, what's happening now. Okay. So you go for the DNA test first, then- I like think it's a nice place to start. Yeah, I think the DNA is nice. Because also people who um, perhaps are on HRT or they've got regular cycles and things and the testing is going to be difficult because you know, it might be when you're perimenopause you've got one month where your, um, your brain is going, make estrogen, make estrogen, and yet your ovaries are not listening, and then you get no period, and then the next month, it's like, oh, actually, yes, I'm quite relaxed, I'm, I'm gonna have a period this month. So, you know, it's all over the place. So it's quite useful DNA testing, because it doesn't matter where you are, what supplements you're taking, what medication you're taking, um, it's your genes, it's a, it's a cheek swab, so it's your genes. Okay, so I, I mean, I swear by DNA tests, and particularly the Life Coach EX one when it comes down to hormones, because, I don't care what anybody says, it can be the plague of a woman's life from the age yeah. of 12 to 60. And we have to invest in it. Personally, I think it should all be on the NHS because yeah. women can kill people when they're uh, menopausal, when they've got PMT, it's a real thing. It's not just the curse, it is a real thing. Okay, I wanna get down to some specific questions if that's yes. okay with you. A lot of people coming up here saying, what happens if you're not getting periods? I'm 43, 44, not had a period in nearly a year. What does that sort of flag for you? Yeah, so they haven't had, if you haven't had a period for more than a year, then you are probably officially in, in menopause. But if you're still getting them, but they're just very regular, like you might have two months or even four months and then you get it, then that's perimenopause. OK, so you're you're still you're still making those hormones. It's just one month. You might be making a lot of estrogen one month. You're not. Um, and then, of course, progesterone is very important as well. So that's where the Dutch test is very useful, because if you have very, very low you know, progesterone, um, you know, that's that's responsible for that's sort of our anti-anxiety. You know, it helps with insomnia. So that, that kicks in after ovulation 
And if your progesterone is really low, or perhaps it's the ratio from progesterone to estrogen, you know, you can, you can feel really low and anxious and irritable. So progesterone... I, 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 I do, because I spoke to you yesterday, and yesterday was day two of my... Uh, well, day two, I was on my period, and I didn't have any PMT, so that's good, because yeah. normally I have, I have, like, a week of it, so there's something working, yes, it with, cracks working down, with you. It but right in the middle of it, I got 24 hours of, I hate me, I'm very anxious, I had one coffee and it sent me over the edge and I was uh, quite tearful. I had to cancel a, comp uh, a meeting with somebody and then by six o'clock at night, I snapped out of it, had a coffee, risked it, had a coffee and I was back in the room. But I've like got 12 hours of real horrible self-hatred that but it used to last a lot longer. So would you say that's progesterone? Yeah, but I think it can be either, you know, low progesterone, um, don't have your test results in front of me, but I think you're producing actually a reasonable amount of progesterone. So uh, it's more, I think it's the imbalance between estrogen and progesterone. So you've got to get the balance right. And also it's your detox pathways. Because remember, we, your 2-OH had sort of, one of your pathways had sort of shot up. So we, it's always about the ratio. So, and also you're getting rid <laughs> of that estrogen then you've got that toxic estrogen circulating you've got your progesterone so there's like too much circulating estrogen and then in you know in, re in relation to the progesterone so i think it's more for you that detox side of things because your progesterone was looking looked okay but of course when we get our period then all those hormones are just really low but um i think your progesterone is okay so i think it's more in relation to it because sometimes progesterone doesn't okay, help. I mean, you know, I had awful PNT from the age of, well, 19. I was put on the pill because I had a regular period. So that's all doctors, you, you, you know, knew what to do. So I was on the, on the pill for, you know, three years. And that, I think that worsened my symptoms. Um, I think my mother thought I was making it up. You know, it just kind of like wasn't a thing or perhaps no one talked about it. I just had very weird kind of symptoms. And I went to some very strange woman in Harley Street, um, you know, it just kind of wasn't her doctor to sort of deal with PMT apart from the pill. And she gave me natural progesterone and it didn't help. So for me, it wasn't that my progesterone was low. It was that fact that I was not, now I understand, I wasn't detoxing my estrogen. So that was the problem. And generally, I'm, I'm not too bad now. I'll get some months better than others. As I told you, Davinia, yesterday, I was not in a good place. We had a rave the night before. I had a late night. That, that might save you over the edge if you're having a little bit of a rave. I only had one glass of wine, but I don't detox my alcohol very well. Um, that's another so you thing. felt like you'd actually been to an Ibiza all night. Yeah. <laughs> So I felt all, you. all day yesterday, I was not feeling good. But you see, phase one that DIM works on, yeah? Phase one, is that, that phase one that DIM helps with this Eastern detox pathway? Now, if you plug up that pathway with other things, like if you already, if you don't detox by alcohol well, or um, caffeine. caffeine, and you're also or exposing yourself to a lot of toxins and things like that, well then, God, how is your estrogen gonna like get out? You know, how's that this gonna... is this is so interesting to know that your periods or, or the PMT or the menopause or perimenopause has got so much to do with your liver. Who'd yep. have thought? Straight away, you just think ovaries. Why yep. the hell would you think? You think ovaries and up here, don't you? But yep. it's incredible to know that it's your liver, and you've got to support that liver. I say it to people time and time again, the liver is more important. It's not just to get rid of alcohol, it's to get know, rid of yeah. everything, including deodorant, including cheap perfume, yeah. unexpected perfume, including the stuff that you wipe the table with. It's and actually, you're including calm. the chlorine that you go swimming in when you go in a swimming pool, yeah. the shampoo, it's everything. And if you're constantly adding little bits to that poor liver, regardless of what you're eating, of course you're going to get worse PMT P because it's got more of a job to do. Right, yes, and I'm a, I'm a livery person, I'd say. That's my, that's my problem is, you know, is the liver. So I need a lot of liver support. So I do take phosphatidylcholine. I'll, I'll, I'll cycle my NAC. Um, I, yeah, what else do I do? So I take DIM, CAD, glucose. I'll, I'll mix and match certain things. But I have to concentrate, yes, and I'll do body brushing and I put Epsom salts in the bath and I wear organic makeup and skincare. <sighs> so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you've got to, really. You've got to. And it, as soon as you realise the ingredients you're putting on your skin are going into your liver, you suddenly go, 
sod off. Yeah. And, and remember stress also, your stress okay. hormones, they have to be detoxi detoxified as well. So if you're, you know, if you're really stressed, if your cortisol is high, so you're in fight or flight mode, so you are killing that boar or you're running away from that boar, I mean, really, does it think, oh my God, hang on a minute, just a minute, let's make some estrogen. Or make, let's, let's detoxify some estrogen. Or let's make female sex yeah. hormones. Yeah, or, it's, so. it's, it's a priority, yeah. yeah. You're absolutely right. Okay, right, so I've got some questions okay. here. And of course, we're 20 minutes in and we've not even answered the question. Oh. What a pair of yes. Okay, so I'm just going to hit it hard. Yeah. And uh, right, Okay, hot flushes, what are they? Okay, so... That's what I was talking about with, that is quite often an estrogen detox issue because a lot of people will say that, you know, if they have a drink, then their hot flushes are worse. So I think, you know, a lot of the time that is a, a liver detox issue. Um, so I would make sure you are addressing all these things we've talked about for sure, okay? But it is the most common problem for, for perimenopause, menopausal women. It's a thing that people... Actually, one of the thing, top things they, they hate, the worst thing, you can be literally just, I mean, I've been talking to clients and I've seen them suddenly just go like that. Yeah. And it is really upsetting for them um, and it keeps them awake at night. So absolutely, you must support your liver detox, you know, pathway. Give me some supplements, just give me some supplements for liver. Okay, for hot flushes, I think that I, there is a really good supplement. Now, this isn't sort of less so much liver detox, but it's very good for hot flushes called um, Estro Prime plus yeah i don't have it here because i don't take it but no it's um, okay we'll, we'll put it in the edit there's a lot of right. scientific research to show it that all various the ingredients in there's a patented formula really does help with with the, with detoxification so this is on top of obviously looking after your diet not having excess sugar and things like that these are all on top but it is a very good supplement now if you are perimenopausal and your levels are up and down. Sometimes you've got estrogen, sometimes you haven't got much, sometimes you've got, you know, sometimes it, it, you're producing it, sometimes you're not, and you're all over the place. There is a very nice supplement called um, Equifem, E-Q-U-I. Can't take this one, though, if, you are, um, if, you're to have, if you've got any hormones. So you can't take this if, you are, if you've got the Mirena coil. You can't take it. If the copper coil's okay, because there's a copper and iron free one, which if I need it, I'll go onto that one. I've got the copper coil. Um, so if you've taken any hormones, because it has some female hormone in there, some female glandular, so you cannot take it if you are on HRT. Absolutely no, okay? So there are definitely some contraindications with these things, okay? Okay, um, but it's, but it's, no, it's a great not. place to start reading, just, just even yeah. to read up on these supplements and see what's out there. But if you're not, it's a lovely supplement. It's, um, it's like a female multi, has a bit of female glandular and a bit of brain glandular because, you know, we, we need a bit of that yeah. brain glandular help as well. As, as I've talked about in past chats, you know, all these hormones work together. So the adrenals, because the adrenals got to shout at your ovaries and say, come on, make some you know, estrogen and stuff. So, um, and the thyroid as well. So I think it's really important to always balance. Yes, you can take it with thyroxin. You can, yes. It's just if you can't, if you're taking any, um, you know, uh, female sex hormone supplements, you know, so if you're on, yeah, if you're on the pill, if you're um, Mirena coil. Okay, so uh, next question. Uh, her colitis gets worse with PMT, what can she do? Okay, so with colitis, obviously, I mean, I think we've um, I've spoken to this person, so definitely, I think they are all working already on the gut, but that is crucial. Paleo diet, um, at, at probably even, I know it's awful, but, you know, cutting right back or maybe cutting out all carbohydrates as well. Um, Just go colitis. carnival. Go carnival for a month. It's the best elimination <laughs> um, diet. I know it's controversial, yeah. but you don't have to think. Healing you know? the gut lining, um, healing the Bone gut broth. lining with, um, there are various supplements, obviously, because you need more than just, you know, you've got to do the diet, but you need more than that. Um, slippery elm is very useful. There's a supplement I recommend quite often called IPS capsules, which has a lot of different nutrients in. Uh, re and, and cycling your probiotics as well, for sure. Um, Saccharomyces boulardii can be useful. So we're working on the gut because there are estrogen receptors in the gut as well. Okay, so when you get PMT, some people say they get diarrhea because, of course, these hormones are going to affect, you know, the gut. There are estrogen receptors there. It's going to affect the gut. And suddenly you could just some people find that they do get diarrhea before they get the period. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'd be looking right at the gut. 
that might be because I've had copious amounts of cleansing tea because I've eaten so much crap, knowing me. I'm just thinking, yes, that rings a bell. No, that'll be my doing. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just, you just despair at me, don't you? And my uh, <laughs> self oh my God, thank you. <laughs> oh, no, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this one, number three, what I can obviously um, relate to, low mood, she's down and she's anxious before and during PMT, her period. So it's PMT and yeah. Yeah. So that, you know, that could be a low progesterone issue. It could be, as we talked about, that ratio between, between estrogen and progesterone, but it could be very low progesterone. You know, that's where the Dutch test is useful because... It might be that you have very, very low progesterone and then perhaps might even need to think about bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. I, it's not something because I'm not a doctor, so I don't recommend that, but I work with um, a doctor on this. Um, but it might just be, you know, the fact that also low estrogen affects mood. Now, estrogen drops, you know, before your period. Um, and it might be the fact that, you know, low estrogen, because that affects serotonin. And if, yeah, so it might be the fact that then you're not producing enough serotonin, low mood. So you could be a couple of things, could be a couple of things. Tell me, you know, well, obviously I've had the Dutch test. I've done yeah. that. And basically you, is it day 19, you wee on five different strips throughout yeah. a sort of 24 hour period on day 19, day, uh, day 20. And okay, so I understand that. But what, how do you test while you're menstruating? What, what test would there be for them? Because obviously this is just, hi Tim. Yeah. Is, oh, Tim Biohacker's just joined us. So I'm sure he's just delightful hearing about. Hey, I didn't know we had any on. men, but welcome. Well, yeah, no, you know he knows his stuff. He doesn't care about talking about stuff. Like he's great. Want to okay. that so when you are actually menstruating, what tests can you, can you do for that to see your actual hormones then? Well, they because will be. to me, that's yeah. the most important time. Well, when they you get will be symptoms. very low during. They will be very low sort of during. That's when your, your, um, your levels are at their lowest. But there's a Dutch cycling test. So there's the Dutch complete, which you and I have done. But the yeah. Dutch cycling is very useful for a, 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 a wider picture. So not just sort of before your period, what's happening, but kind of it looks at the levels all month. So then you're going to be weighing on paper a lot more. Um, it's it all over the house. Yeah, because it looks at the pattern all month. I haven't done that test yet. I keep thinking I'm going to do oh it. Oh my god! So that would be a month without coffee, wouldn't it? No, I don't. Well, I don't think you have to for the whole sort of month to do that. That, but that would be mean. <laughs> that would be freaking really awful. Mean. I'm going to look into that. I'm going to no, buy that. No, I don't think so because I think that's more because of. I think it's more affecting than the cortisol, and that is still done that particular test in the same way that we did it over that 24-hour period. So, I mean, at some point, I intend. I'm about to do this one with mine is from November. I'm going to do mine again, and I would like to do the duck cycling anyway just to have a look at well what's happening with my hormones all month but if it's not necessary you know you can just do that dutch complete somebody's asked how much it is can't remember how much because I, I you buy it straight from the lab and then they send me the results there's I, there's think about, it, I think, think it's about 400 odd quid or something no like that. it's not that one it's not i think it's two six i think so it's 289 or 269 anyway it's on my website it's on my website in laboratory testing and then you can go straight to order it straight through the lab Oh, I'd love to um, get a deal with those Dutch pe Dutch people, <laughs> the Dutch yeah, people. So that is, yeah. so I work with Regenerous Lab. Now, they don't create the test because the Dutch test is produced by a company called Precision, I can't say this, Precision Analytical, which is, um, it's uh, USA. So that's where all our wee samples go off to America. I wonder yeah. if I can, like, pay them a visit or something and try and charm them. Well, I'll come uh, with you to America on a research trip at some point. It's 10% off for cash. Anyway, that's my usual patter. Okay, fabulous. Right, okay. I can't get Estro Prime shipped to UK. No, you, that's the thing because Estro Prime Plus is through, generally through practitioner only. So um, DM me. So it's all about who you know, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be very careful. It's freaking it. And it shouldn't be, actually. Look, oh, I'm off on one now. No, it shouldn't be. It should just be, boom, I'm a woman. I'm going through this. I want X, Y, and Z. Give it to me because I'm feeling symptoms that none of you people who do all the bloody, you know, laws in this country when it comes to health have ever, ever experienced because you're all blokes. 
I think because the company I work with, they, you know, they have a lot of quality control and they don't want people taking supplements that could make them feel worse. So they want to make sure that yeah, it's like, has... How do I feel any worse? I want to kill someone. Yeah. I want to I kill myself. And like, this is it. It's like we are, we're allowed to have kids. We're allowed to get married. We're allowed to get divorced. We're allowed to yeah. do whatever we want. But we're not allowed to bespoke our own health. Yeah. Because I think sometimes, sometimes though, amazing. it's if people don't research. Like, say somebody gets 5-HTP and they're on, 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 on an antidepressant. That's dangerous. So if take, somebody's taking a female glandular uh, and they're already on HRT, uh, you know, like, not, not good. So sometimes there are, you know. Oh, I know. Well, it's the sort of, you know what, I mean, let's face it. I went through the 90s. I've, I've self-medicated an awful lot and I'm still just about here. <laughs> and you're There's still a lot alive. more dangerous things that I've shoved down my neck than some female glandular. And what's the worst that's happened to you? You're just, your pancreas needs to produce some more enzymes. There you go, it's a pancreatic thing. Okay, right, okay. Big one, weight gain, perimenopause. Yes. I know, that's up there with the hot flushes as well. Estrogen does help um, regulate the metabolism. But yes, we need to be looking at stress as well levels. I mean, it's quite often during perimenopause that, you know, we've got, you know, children sort of growing up, it might be your elderly parents, or perhaps a parent has died, you know, this, you know, there can be a lot of sort of working. Or being locked in a career. frigging house with your nearest or and dearest. <laughs> or lockdown. Um, you know, so it's important to look at cortisol as well, because too much cortisol, then, you know, as I talked about that fight or flight mode, right, okay, we need glucose, come on, then insulin is, you know, being pumped in because we, we need to get all that glucose into ourselves to run, to, to kill that ball or run away. So then there's too much, you know, insulin. Then we're sort of, it's like pushing into ourselves. So it's creating fat, more and more fat. So we get, then we can get something called insulin resistance, which is co quite common in perimenopause. So, you know, that is then where you're going to gain fat, you know, particularly around that middle, Particularly around the tummy, that is quite, you know, an indication, you know, of looking at regulating insulin. So you see how it does interplay with other things. It's not always just estrogen's fault. And then thyroid as well. People say, you know, oh my goodness, I suddenly now can't lose weight. Yeah, well, you know, check that thyroid. I know I sent the thyroid symptom checker to a lot of people. Um, that helps regulate weight. So all of these things, they all work together. Okay, so what would you, just as a quick fix, now we can't all suddenly start nipping to like functional doctors and stuff like that. Yeah. What, what diet would you recommend now? You're feeling brain foggy, you're feeling bloated, you've obviously got craving sugar, what would you say straight away? Because okay. I know what I do, I yeah. just say go keto. Yeah, well actually that's, well I mean keto might work well for someone, but some people might not be able to tolerate the high fats, but you can absolutely try keto. You have got to get down those carbs. Um, I yeah. know it's tough, yeah. but, you know, you keep getting around that cycle of, you know, eating sugar. I'm not talking about the occasional treat. I'm talking about, you know, it's this sort of sugar all the time in your diet. Then it is going to make symptoms worse. For sure. There is no supplement to help this. You have to get your diet right first. Sorry. I'd love to give you a quick fix. Okay. So what... Yeah. So try keto or just try, you know, a lower carb. So my seven day plan, which we've got the offer still on. Yeah. Um, that is not keto, um, but it is lower carb. It is, lo it is low carb. So it is based around more proteins and vegetables. No specific ones. You get a lot of choice there, but it's based around, it could be like chicken and vegetables or, or fish and some salad. So it is, it is based a lot around, I would eat good protein to balance out your blood sugars. I think a lot of women are eating protein at breakfast. Um, I'm not talking about yeah, have bacon and eggs. Oh my God, I have bacon and eggs and mushrooms. Done. You're not going to be hungry till lunchtime. Yeah. I bet and you a bottle of coffee. Bet. You are going to be not even I hungry till full. dinner time. I mean, and I, I just, bet you were full, weren't you? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I, I normally have, uh, I, I normally have hardly any carbs a day now, honestly. And I think since I've been here in lockdown, I've lost about half a stone and put on muscle. Yeah. Of fat and water, and I've had my period. And that is just... That's amazing. Just building muscle by yeah. having a super high-fat diet and mm. a super low-carb. Good and oil, you know, exercise can help. Exercise can help with insulin control. Without I mean, even, you know, even five minutes... Okay, I'm going to say you do more than this, but even five minutes of exercise before each meal will help reduce the uh, insulin effect of that meal. So, um, so it's not going to, you know, it's, it's five minutes. Just 
run up and down, go up and down the stairs or something, even five minutes before each meal will help reduce that insulin effect. Um, yeah. It's all I just about- I say hi to one of my clients, Michelina. Sorry, she was just- Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Okay, right, here we go. Uh, what does a female DNA test cover? Okay, so uh, went through my one, but it will cover, I know it's all back to front, it will cover sort of your whole estrogen pathway. It'll show whether you, how much, you know, if you've got too much circulating estrogen potentially, your detox pathway. So I favor, so we want to go down this protective pathway called 2-hydroxy, 2-OH. This is our, the good pathway, but it's annoying. Our estrogen ends up going in phase one, it could go down three pathways. So I favor naturally without any supplementation, supplementation I favor the pathway that's not so good, 4-OH pathway. Got a nice red there, okay? Um, and this quite often I see does tie in with people's sort of symptoms or perhaps their sort of cancer risk, okay? But we yeah. want to go down this middle pathway, 2-OH. So what dim dum is, dim, dim dum, what dim does is push it. It pushes it into there. There we go. We, we're looking at that phase one. Then we're looking at your detox pathways. And then this is excretion through urine and bile. So we can see your genetic predisposition and all the different pathways. So my sulfonation pathway, which is um, sulfur pathway, so that's things that would help with that pathway, onions, garlic, uh, asparagus, leek, sulfur rich foods. I'm okay there actually, so that's fine. Um, but it's this glucuronidation pathway. Uh-uh, I'm not going there. So I'm taking C80 gluco. So, um, I, I, you know, I'm quite hormonal. Well, I was, I am naturally, I'm just dealing with it. Yes, you're biohacking your hormones. I'm bio, well, I hope so. I mean, unless, you know, my husband sort of says otherwise, but I think I'm biohacking. Oh, screw him, he knows nothing. <laughs> but yeah, okay. no, I mean, I am, I'm, 40, so I'm 47 in June. I am perimenopausal, but I don't have symptoms of perimenopause. Because you Not have yet. your hormones. You know the pathways, you know your weaknesses, and you supplement according to those yeah. weaknesses. Yeah. Not because what someone said they did back in the day yeah but I'm, I'm on it you know we change it all the time you know if I've yeah. had a if it's been hot one night you know I might sort of go to my husband was it hot last night because I felt really hot you know I felt really hot was it hot and he goes it was hot and I go phew okay it was hot okay I'm not there yet. yeah I'm not there yet I'm not having hot flushes yet I'm okay so you know you've got to just you know keep an eye on things <laughs> he must be like oh my god yeah it was hot Look, let's not go there. Poor guy. Imagine being married to me. It's like the food police. And yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I've got one as well. He's <laughs> just at the end. Okay, right now then. Oh, menopausal dry skin. Yes. Yes, because the estrogen does help with the sort of lubrication. So when our estrogen levels drop, then we are not going to sort of produce that nice sort of like soft tissue and things like that. So yeah, that's a huge problem, very, very common. Um, so for skin, got my three favorites for perimenopausal skin. We've got, I did bring one up. This is the only thing I brought up. So um, yes, fish oils can be good. And certainly we'd yeah. rather eat whole fish if you can. Um, some people do need to supplement, but really just try and eat the fish. But this is called body, I know it's back to front, so it's called balance oil. Vinny, can you write that one down? Ooh. It's called balance yeah, oil. Balance. Yeah, and I think I'm, I don't know, I recommend this for you actually. It's good for cell membrane to make sure that that estrogen and all those female sex hormones are getting in and out of the cell properly. But this is a nice <laughs> combination. Do you drink that? Yeah, well, you can get it in supplements as well. I just drink it. But it's an omega-3 and 6 supplement. So together in the ratio. Because sometimes people are taking too many omega-3s. Yes. And actually, they forget about the healthy omega-6s. We're not talking about the, the crap omega-6s in processed foods. But you still need some good omega-6s as well. So, Which is um, what you'd find, what, in flax seeds and things yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, flax seeds. Okay, right. Because I, obviously, I think omega-6, I think polyunsaturated, uh, I think... I, margarine and all this shit yes. Yes. but you, there are some good ones yeah we're like not talking about hydrogenated rubbish. stuff there are some no. good ones i mean i love flax flax seeds. Flax. i think most of us all women i put a tablespoon of ground flax seeds in my um protein shake every morning this is just a nice combo so it's got three and six 
but it's um, from all sort of vegetable source and sort of um, plant, plant-based source. So this is a really nice one for skin. Then we've got something which is um, always a tricky one to say, astaxanthin. So it's a very- I love astaxanthin, it's like astaxanthin. SPF. That's what I take and that's why I don't yes. burn. It is a powerful anti-wrinkle supplement. So check that out, Google it. You'll see there's loads of scientific research. Actually, Tim Biohacker has got a really good one of those that I'm yet to try because I just went to Holland and Barrett and picked it up because it didn't ha they didn't have it in Planet Organic. And I just okay. wanted some astaxanthin because obviously I knew, how, well, it was a few, about a year ago and I knew I was coming to Spain and I just wanted to see if I could like go for the burn and I did and I didn't burn. So astaxanthin, he's got, he, he did a post about it and it was an expensive one. So we've got um, body biobalance oil, astaxanthin, and then the last thing, collagen. Bone vine source, hydrolyzed, so it's 95% absorbed in the body, collagen. But I, no, I, hands I, I, down. There's a, there's a doctor I've been uh, chatting to and she did, she did a test just, just in her, uh, in her, um, surgery in London, just a test that she did on her own. And she found that marine collagen was better than bovine for the skin. Just really? FYI. Yeah. So if I've never used I, it I love bovine so interesting. because I find if my, if my gut's good, my skin seems to be good. But I think it's, it's specifically you've got that weak skin and yep. weak hair and weak nails. I'd probably go for marine collagen. I mean, I'd do both. I'm a collagen. My freak. clients say the bovine source. I have to say I have never recommended the marine. I, I don't know enough. Uh, I mean, it, it may well help, I'm sure, if this doctor's done the test. But of, over the you know, sort of last 12 years, I've been wrecking collagen, uh, recommending collagen. And I mean, if it is healing you've got, your skin, yeah, I yeah, mean, it's it, if you are healing thing. you've got with bovine collagen, mm. your skin's going to be better anyway because yeah. you're getting all the nutrition that you're meant and to have. And people say their hair but, is thicker, so it's the hairdressers that tell them, they'll say, what have you been doing to, you know, what have you been doing to your hair? And I'll go, oh. So yes, it's not cheap, a good quality one that is free of hormones, so grass-fed, a good quality one. Hunter and um, Gather have one. Hunter and Gather have uh, bovine peptides. Now, they would be a very good brand. Obviously, I get mine from Nutrilink, but Hunter Gather are a good retail brand. And, I, I and they've, they've given us some discount as well. I think they've given us like 15% off as well. Use it. Yes. I'll, Use I'll the link discount. It. Yes. Use the discount. I think it might be in my, my highlights under discount code. Right, okay. Exercise and hormones. Ah, yes. Absolutely. Well, you know yourself, Davinia, that you say that uh, exercising absolutely turns you around. And just yesterday, you exercised, you felt better, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Um, I, well, I, di I didn't, but it did something to me. Um, it shook me up a little bit, mm -hmm. so I wasn't as <clears throat> angsty. And, yeah. then, and then when I calmed down after the run, then I started so, so like changed gear. I sort of like went from like first gear into like fourth gear all of a sudden. I didn't go vroom. I didn't over exercise, but when yeah. I sort of calmed down, whatever it was that was out of hill kilter got rebalanced by that exercise. Then I had a coffee and obviously totally artificially gave myself some stimulus because that's how I roll. But I felt great after that. I was yeah. like yesterday because I was worried. I was doing a question and a Q&A &A and I thought, I don't feel right. You know, I, I feel weird. But weird. after I did the exercise, after I had a bit of time, a chill out time on my spike mat and yeah. after um I, I had a coffee like at about five o'clock i was fine it was yeah. just those 12 hours bloody horrible mm -hmm. but we'll get to the bottom of yeah it. We'll people won't it. people won't feel like exercising it doesn't mean you have to go out and i would you know wouldn't say like go on this massive run and so yesterday i was not feeling great um i went on a cliff walk with my daughter and said it was gorgeous day yesterday but i i, I you know i just i couldn't do much more than that yesterday um uh, and today i've done some strength training i couldn't have gone on a run but i went did some strength training um and i need to do strength training because my dutch has showed my testosterone is on the low side and i really don't want to get osteoporosis and strength training Aha, is that was my next question for that. so low testosterone can me have a knock-on effect with your bone density could do yes and then also um there's something else, another oestrogen one, um, which can indicate this one here, if it's very, there's another circle, if it's very, very low as well, that could, you know, um, certainly indicate that you could go that way. But um, I would say, you know, vitamin D and um, strength training to prevent osteoporosis. I mean, I, I, we need I, I, to I, lift I, something heavy. 
Because, you know, Meg Matthews, her mum had osteoporosis. And so she went on a, she, she got a, a test done and she was heading that way. And she cured herself from yeah. it. So she's one, if you do have fears about osteoporosis and bone thinning and everything, because it takes out so many women, you know, we have to have so many hip replacements after yeah. menopause. She's a good one to have a look at how she did that. And it was with strength training. And I think yeah. she did from couch to 5K. And I told her, I said, you're not winning a race. So you need to enjoy the running. That's why I just say, yeah. get a playlist you like, get an audio book and just run for the chorus and walk for the verse. You'll soon start getting your flow. And before you know it, you're in your own... You're, the mind is the yeah. most powerful thing on the planet. And as soon as you overcome that first five minutes, before you know it, you're into it. And I just know... I hate walking into that gym. I hate it. I've been training for years now. But I know the rest of my day is going to be better, no matter what. Someone was saying um, that, can you still exercise on HRT? Does it not deplete the hormones? No. No, I mean, I, I think all women, we should all be exercising and all be, we've got to prevent osteoporosis. Absolutely, you've all got to be, find something you like. It doesn't have to be running. It doesn't have to be, you know, yoga is your thing, but find something you like. Absolutely, we should all be exercising. So someone's on HRT, but they're still having hormonal um, issues. And I also, yeah, and I also saw somebody else who has had HRT. It sorted out their mood, but they're piling on the weight. Okay, so the person who's on HRT and doesn't feel any different, the HRT is they're not working. It's not achieving what they want to achieve. Right. Okay, so are you not detoxifying estrogen because you're actually then getting those hormones in or do not need them? So that's where you definitely need to look a bit further. Or is it, is it more of a thyroid issue? Or is it more of an adrenal issue? So um, if it's not working, then definitely, you know, I'd think about whether you want to stay on it. I mean, that's not something I can advise at all. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, if it's not working, well, why? Why is it not working? Or is it that you're not detoxifying that estrogen? I think anyone on HRT does need to look at detoxifying, does need to look at supporting the liver detox, possibly with DIM, maybe with CAD glucose, because you are putting exogenous hormones into your body. So it's just something you might And with that, that's a DNA test, isn't it? That's yeah, a one-off DNA see. test. You'll know that for life. Your yeah, we can then see how sensitive you are to... Because obviously there is that, you know, risk uh, of, of uh, breast cancer or hormone-related cancers with HRT. So we can sort of see what your risk factor might be like. And then we say, right, OK, well, if you want to stay on the HRT, um, that's, you know, not my place. Uh, if people are happy on it, yeah, absolutely, stay on it but let's help you detoxify that HRT. Look, a lot of women do need it, so, um, you know, but let's at least make sure that you're detoxifying it. Okay, fantastic. Okay, I'd like to talk quickly about PMT. Uh, well, actually, I want to talk about skin. Someone is getting uh, it on their jaw, and yeah. she hasn't had spots since she was 19, and somebody else is getting back acne when she gets okay. a period. What is that about? Okay, so... Um, if it's just related to period, then I would look at, can you detoxify estrogen? Okay. Right, so that's um, deliberate. So that's then, where DIM and something might help. But right. if it's like you haven't had spots since you're 19, it still could be to do with detoxifying estrogen, and suddenly now you're getting spots. Let's look at testosterone. Have you, you know, could you be a little bit favoring a pathway which is there are two different testosterone pathways. This is a 5-alpha pathway. You can't really sort of see it on here. Are you favoring that? And that's more this androgenic symptoms. So that could be spots. It can be sort of facial hair. So that's and where... And you find that out on the Dutch test, wouldn't you, yeah, on that one? that's the Dutch test. And I would say, you know, things for that, like, um, you know, zinc, uh, green tea is quite good. Zinc is one of the best ones. Um, stinging nettle, so you can drink that as a tea, and then sometimes mainly choose a supplement called salt palmetto. But definitely try zinc. Yeah, for sure. So it's working out, is it a testosterone problem, or is it an estrogen detox problem? Okay, fab. So it's, it's two things to consider. Yeah. Right, um, ba, 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 ba. there's a woman who's DM'd me and she has, she's come, she's come off uh, the pill and she's had a quite a stressful time, but she's okay again now. But she's getting really light, yet really clotty periods. Is that something to be worried about after being on the pill for years? Well, I presume they've gone through their doctor because you'd absolutely want to speak to your doctor about that. But I do know that when people come off the pill, 
it can take up to six months for their hormones to rebalance. So I get girls coming off the pill, um, clients of mine, and um, so teens in their 20s, and it can take months for them to get their periods back. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would just, you know, give it time. Uh, absolutely go through your doctor first. I think that'd be the first point of call. Um, and then if not, then, you know, think about sort of, you know, do you need to then balance out your hormones, sort of get your hormone levels checked? Um, but yeah, it can take time after you come off the pill. Can take time. Okay. Um, and also, I, I wanted to ask you, um, so you, you, obviously you operate in the world of functional medicine and we're all, we all have our own GPs and everything, which is slightly, which is completely different. So obviously GPs tell you there's, there's no risk with going on the pill. I mean, I went on it at 15 or 14 or something like that. God knows what, but, um, what do they say in the functional world about going on the pill at a young age and staying on it for 35 years that they, that, that the regular doctors don't tell you what is the functional world thinking about it what is the, what 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 would you recommend as a form of okay. contraception well ideally contraception? ideally we do i do you don't want to go on the pill i wish i had known because i think it just worsens my hormones look i now can see my genetic profile of course but i think it worsened things by putting those exogenous hormones into me it definitely definitely worsened things i'm sure um but um yeah no i wouldn't be uh, you know, I, I don't that, I don't recommend because I'm not a doctor. I'm not recommending people. Oh, don't go on the pill. But um, if I was starting all over again, I would not be taking the pill. I would not be putting exogenous hormones into my body. Um, it depletes your B vitamins, particularly B6. Um, it, it, you know, just the chances of just messing up your hormones. Now, if you do need contraception, um, you know, you could consider something that I've got the copper coil. And a lot of, you know, these um, teenagers as well, that, you know, they're starting to use things like the copper coil as well. Um, you, you might get heavy periods for a couple of months, but then it should, you know, level out. So there are things like that that you can consider. Um, you don't have to put hormones into your body. I and mean, we, 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 you know, we have a hard time. It's always down to us. It's not fair, really, is it? Um, but yes, there are condoms. But obviously after that, then you could use something like the copper coil or, or just risk it like Davinia. Well, no, I live life on the edge. What the hell? <laughs> you see, you've got safe, safe oh, on me, and then you've sulk. got the risky one. Just sulk, and they don't even want to know you. It's fine. I'm, I'm over it anyway. Um, polycystic ovaries. Yeah. Okay, so you definitely want to be looking at the Dutch test is good for that in terms of um, what's happening with testosterone. Um, but you also want to be looking at insulin and insulin resistance because this can cause it as well. And you can get, obviously, I know it's not, it's, you can't do that now, but you can get your doctor to, to test for, um, for ins insulin. And then there's a marker called HbA1c. Now that is a marker, I do that in my three month program, I get these blood tests on and you see that. So that's how much sugar has been in your blood for like, you know, a couple of months. It's, it's used a lot to, um, for markers of prediabetes and, di and um, diabetes. So I think we need to look at insulin, we'd want to be looking at testosterone as well. Yeah, I mean, I've got clients, I have people with polycytic ovaries at the moment who are on my three-month um, metabolic program because it's particularly oh. good for balancing estrogen. Um, sorry, not for estrogen, but for, for sort of insulin, I mean, um, and sort of all the hormones. So, um, you, know, it, it, you know, it is a tricky one, but it's very, very common. And it's working out what are your symptoms, because symptoms vary, but weight gain is a very common one. And then there's, of course, hair. Um, you know, they can get sort of facial hair and things, but weight gain is, is one of the most common. Okay, also somebody, uh, I remember it's just coming back to me about skin pigmentation, even though she's not been pregnant, can hormones okay. cause this? I know it's generally liver associated skin pigmentation, isn't it? Yeah, it can be. Yeah, it can be hormones, absolutely, that can, that, you know, tends, I mean, I'd sort of want to look at what kind of skin pigmentation, but yes, can be, you know, can be hormones, can be liver detox. Sometimes I find people when they're very overweight as well, and they lose weight, and particularly they start losing weight quite quickly, um, a lot of toxins are formed in, um, are stored in fat cells, and they can release these toxins really quickly, and their liver can't keep up. Um, so I think saunas, I know it's not very easy now, but saunas, mm. detoxing, liver. and um, a kind of glutathione uh, supplement to help as well. But you okay. can see how important this liver is. If we keep coming back to this liver, it's... It right. is. So 
just to just to recap so you need because you've got two minutes left yeah ideally yep. you meet a woman who is having menopausal or perimenopausal or she's having um terrible pmt and rage what would you do initially with her straight away what's the process that you put her through as a practitioner so if they are so what well, any of these obviously it depends are they pmt is it perimenopausal so i start with most clients with just doing a one-to-one -one consultation now some people at the moment because of the situation to keep costs down i'm saying people go and do the test first and then we'll do the consultation so if they're doing a test, then we do the consultation, we'll put it all together. Now, if they're not doing a test, I'm just going to be looking at symptoms. I get them to fill out their online, an online health questionnaire before, and I go through all sorts of symptoms. So we need to work out is, um, where are you? Are you getting regular cycles? Sort of, are you perimenopausal? If you're menopausal, maybe your hormones are so low. Well, we don't need to detoxify them because you, you'd hardly have any. So actually, maybe you need some, you need a female glandular. We actually want to give you some hormones. So it all depends sort of where you are. But where I start with all clients is generally a one-to-one -one consultation. And, um, you know, sometimes we'll do testing. Sometimes, you know, they can't afford the testing. So, we'll, you know, we'll do what, you know, what we can and maybe we don't even need to. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, hormones is something that I suppose it's 90% yeah, of my clients uh, okay, kind of so go for a DNA test and then yeah. go for the Dutch panel test yeah. and then you will have clarity once and for all. I like to start, to I like mind. to start, yeah. I like to start with a, now if people can afford it. I'm going to lose I you in a love. second, we're going to we're going right. to hit. I love that there's a new, there's a special offer, it's back on, 399, they've done it for you tonight, Davinia, so it's back oh, on. Nice. Okay, so we've got a, spe back on. a special. Back on, only until midnight tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so £399 for the DNA yeah. test, which is a female panel, yeah. instead of like £600 and something pounds.